everyone. Good evening. It's Dr. John Bennett of Neurosurgical TV televising from Miami. Tonight we have the first uh, of a series of case presentations for the uh, Nepal Neuroscience Pro uh, Center in Nepal with I'm Sherry and MD. Uh, tonight, Ipe's going to give a couple ca recent case presentations of cases he saw in uh, saw in Nepal this week. Before I turn it over to Ipe, let me introduce the guests. Hello, Marco. Marco, can you hear me okay? Well, there you go. Good evening. Okay. My name is Marco Antonio. I'm from Bolivia. Right now, I'm studying uh, here in Mexico City because I want to do my specialty here, so I'm studying right now. Okay. Thanks a future, for the invitation. A future neurosurgeon. Yeah. I, and I don't know if Caesar can get through. Caesar, can you hear me okay? Uh, we may have to go on. Okay, I, good morning. It's all yours. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you very much. So we, uh, it's a pleasure to be starting this neurosurgical teaching series on neurosurgical TV. This will be aimed at junior neurosurgeons and uh, uh, residents to take them through the principles of uh, many things like skull base, vascular, spine, and so on. So here we start off with uh, cases, real-time cases, uh, which means we'll be taking them through the angiograms, we'll be We'll be telling them the points of uh, what to look out for in the angiograms and then uh, the steps of surgery. How do we approach a certain uh, tumor or an aneurysm or spine for that matter? So let's start off with uh, a picture straight off. Now, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Are you, are you seeing that my screen is shared? Yeah, seeing, I think, think, yeah, we see the images. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Excellent. Yeah. So, this is a CT NGO picture that I recently got. And, uh, you know, it's very confusing because this patient has very thick subarachnoid hemorrhage, very thick. And uh, her GCS had dropped. So um, we looked at the CT angio, and this is what we found. Now, if you look at this, you can see that's, uh, I mean, the carotid and the A1, that's the A1, anterior cerebral artery. And this A1 seems to be hiding beneath, you know, where the ACOM is. There seems to be, this A1 seems to be going beneath. So this A1 seems to make a huge turn like that. So the same way this A1 seems to come here and go there. I mean, this is the first image I want to show you. So sometimes it's a bit confusing. You see, we go to the next image. That's your carotid. On the left side, that's your A1. That's the carotid the A1 and then you see something jetting out there. So here uh, we presume that this aneurysm was projecting inferomedially. So uh, we looked at the other images which confirmed it. So I'm going to show you straight i'm going to take you straight into surgery so that's your can you see that john yes we can okay so that's our dural opening uh, here i usually go subfrontal uh, but in this case i would rather uh, take a little bit of sylvian as well. So we started off with sylvian dissection. So you can see the sylvian dissection. There was thick subarachnoid hemorrhage everywhere. The brain was a bit uh, edematous, but uh, that's okay. So we irrigate and we keep on 
dissecting so you can see the steps of sylvian dissection the most important thing in sylvian dissection here is that we need to do only a proximal sylvian dissection yeah, there is no need to uh, you know there is no need to go ahead and do distal sylvian dissection there will be blood throughout because it's a subarachnoid bleed you cannot put too much retraction because the brain is already angry so you need to keep on irrigating it's a, i would say it's like operating under water so it's you need to keep on having your patience you need to have your sharp instruments never uh, you know don't do blunt dissection of the arachnoids you can see how we take out the arachnoid gently cut it go advance one step again take the arachnoid cut it again advance take the arachnoid cut it and this is how sylvian dissection is done and then don't worry about the blood oozing out it's going to help you because see the brain is slowly clearing the brain which was angry looking it's slowly it's like magic it slowly starts clearing and you can see beneath the arachnoid what's happening because once you open the arachnoid keep on irrigating keep on sharp dissecting the blood will come out and that slowly the brain is going to clear this is one of your uh, main objectives also because you want to clear as much as subarachnoid hemorrhage as possible so you see now you're going into the proximal sylvian and putting a ball dissector there and i'm slowly delineating the arachnoid that i need to cut i'm telling my residents this is the path that i'm going to take my ball dissector is my pathfinder so gently i put my pathfinder and then i i cut and then i slowly advance just know there's a it's complete patience you're not even thinking about the aneurysm at this point at this point the only thing you want is to open the doors so like john makes the connections so this is the connection to the aneurysm so it's very gentle there is no need for any hurry here the aneurysm can rupture at any time but it could have ruptured during the night as well so you really don't have to you you need to take that off your mind you need to even forget that you doing an aneurysm case many of the my junior surgeons they worried about aneurysms because it's a potential time bomb but then you think about it then you're not going to do very good because you're going to hurry but in here you just cannot hurry uh, it's like drawing a gun slow is fast so you go very slowly you talk to all your residents uh, and relax and keep on cutting the arachnoid opening the arachnoid opening the pathways making more connections and using your pathfinder so that is your optic now that side is the optic now so you can see the optic now slowly taking shape there and lateral to that you you know that lateral to that optic nerve will be the carotid so you are looking for the carotid there it is covered in blood you see it's covered in blood now let's go to the second video sorry i need to open this in uh, interest media right so now you can see the carotid beautiful the carotid is caked with blood you know carotid was completely caked with blood so i am slowly delineating the arachnoid that i need to take showing my residents talking to them so you can see that is the optic nerve and that's the carotid you can see a lot of csf and irrigation mixed together there's no need to take the anti decliner process or anything here you just going to delineate arachnoid cut the arachnoid gently very gently then again look beneath so you will have arachnoid connections here you must understand this retractor is not having any pressure it's a people say retractorless surgery 
uh, I don't believe in anything dogmatic. I mean, I generally don't like the retractors when I do an Indian hemispheric or something. Uh, but here, you need to keep that brain from coming into your field. Even one millimeter counts a lot. So that retractor, if you see, it's moving freely. So you just use uh, a cotton patty to gently move from one side. Identify the arachnoid. No hurry at all here. You can see that. Feel around. Probe around. Take that blood off. And you may think it's very slow. It is not slow. This entire surgery for an aneurysm, it doesn't take more than an hour usually. Sometimes we finish ACOMS within 40 minutes, but from the dural opening. But we generally never hurry. Now you can see the A1 is in mission. I am uncover I have uncovered as I go above the optic now. I am uncovering the A1. This is the turn of the A1. So the A1 is coming there. Can you see my arrow mark? Can you um, see the A1 is where the A1 is? Yes. That is a vessel. Yeah. That is a vessel. That is a vessel going like that and turning here. So you must understand the aneurysm is a road traffic accident. So the aneurysm forgot to take the turn. So what happened? This is the A1, that's how the blood was going. And the A2 turned here, the road turned here, but the aneurysm didn't turn. The aneurysm is in a straight line to A1. So sometimes, if you cannot find an aneurysm, so that's the A1. I'm just showing my residents, that's the A1. That's where your temporary clip should go, if you have a problem. So that is the A1. I'm, I'm just showing all my residents, this is the A1. So that is how you should clip. I mean, I don't want to clip right now. I mean, we have the aneurysm neck there, but there is no need to clip right away. Uh, I mean, we can wait. If the aneurysm ruptures, I am confident that I can handle it. So, uh, there's no problem. We're just going to wait a bit. Now, the dissection around the aneurysm starts. Now, if you can see something interesting, that is a Huebner's artery. That's an artery which arises. That's a very small perforator. You really don't want to hurt this artery. Okay, so that's a Huebner's artery taking out from almost the A1A2 junction. I'm just showing that. I'm just delineating the Huebner's artery. That is the A1 and that is the A2. The A2 is taking a turn towards me. The A2 is taking a turn towards me. And the aneurysm, that's the aneurysm neck. I'm showing the aneurysm neck. No hurry here again. So, I'm delineating the arachnoid above the aneurysm. That's the aneurysm. That's the arachnoid above the aneurysm. So, I need to see the aneurysm. You know, there was a, earlier aneurysm surgeons, they just see the neck of the aneurysm, they figure out where the neck of the aneurysm and they go for it. That's not right. Uh, you need to see the aneurysm and say hello to the aneurysm before going and clipping it. You know, it's very rude to clip the aneurysm without actually uh, saying, seeing it and saying hello to it. You know, That's, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot be rude to an aneurysm. So, I am making sure the aneurysm is very comfortable. I am also very comfortable. So, you can see that's the A1 at low zoom. That is a that is the artery of Huebner. That is A2. And there is the aneurysm. The aneurysm is beginning there. And again, I also don't believe in completely uncovering the aneurysm and uh, uh, looking for everything. When you clearly know that there is nothing, just for the heck of it, well, you can do that. When you're in your junior days, you can do that. But, uh, you know, after, you don't want to waste time with an aneurysm also. So both are not good. Not exposing the aneurysm adequately and uh, uh, clipping it is not good. And can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So now I am dissecting the A1 away from the optic nerve gently, so that I get place for my clip. Wait again.
Now, the aneurysm is nicely delineated. That is the A1. You see how much time we are spending here. A lot of time. Just showing everybody that's the aneurysm. That's, a, that's the neck of the aneurysm. And you can see one perforator or arachnoid strand there. So you need to be very careful. So this much arachnoid is open. So I can see the end of the neck there. The end of the neck there. So that is the vessel. This side is my perforator. And that's where my clips are going to go in. So I'm already salivating at my chance. Okay, let me put the clip in. But... You know, you need to wait a little bit because I want to see if this aneurysm is not what it is seen on the NGO. Sometimes these aneurysm may, aneurysms may give you a nasty surprise. I mean, you see the NGO and you go in and then you find a completely different picture there because uh, the NGO shows only the aneurysm which fills. It doesn't show you the aneurysm which doesn't fill. So sometimes a complex aneurysm is... Uh, not exactly what it seems on the NGO. So I need to be careful. So uh, therefore, I'm just cutting that arachnoid going around the aneurysm. Again, there's no hurry here. There's no temporary clip here. I'm dissecting the aneurysm base. There's no need for a temporary clip. Irrigation so that I can see things clearly and the blood from there, that part goes out. If at this point the aneurysm ruptures, well, I don't think about it when I'm doing surgery, but if, if it ruptures, I know what to do clearly. So, I'm not really worried about, hey, let's put a temporary clip at this point, no. There's no need to. So, I'm trying a temporary clip, you know. Uh, these boys, sometimes they don't give me a straight temporary clip. I mean, we don't have, we, we didn't have one. We, we only had a curved temporary clip. I mean, it's time for us to get new clips properly. So, yeah, so that's uh, aneurysm being delineated. Again, I spent a lot of time uh, figuring out and looking at the scans again to make sure we're not. So, I. I uh, slowly dissect the neck of the aneurysm from the arachnoid strands to make sure there are no vessels there. Now we put in a clip. I mean, that's not the ideal clip. It's a curved clip, but we put in a, we put in a clip nonetheless. You know, it's not for anything else, but it's for making sure that my aneurysm neck is collapsed. So I go there and I... I make sure the neck, I just give a little bit of traction there with my clip and then I know, I know where the neck is and I take it towards the aneurysm, move it towards the aneurysm and clip it and that's it. Now we do an ICG study to make sure that the distal A2 and the hubners and everything is now we take out the temporary clip and this patient is walking around. I mean, she was operated the uh, day before and today she's in the ward. She's walking around completely okay. So that's about uh, an aneurysm. Uh, I'm going to... We have a break in the action. I think I've had some internet problems. Raul, well, let's take this chance to uh, to uh, introduce Raul. How you doing, Raul? Can you hear me okay? You're, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. There you go. Hi, how you doing, Raul? Hi. Good night. Yes, I can hear you. Good. Could you please introduce yourself, Who, where you work, where you're at, etc.? Of course, um, I am from <laughs> Venezuela, but I live in Colombia now. I am neurosurgeon. Okay. I finished my training in Cuba. Very good. Okay, we'll we'll talk more with you later. Okay, I you're back on the on track. 
John, okay. did you get did you get up the clipping of the aneurysm? Uh, yes, yes. We saw the clipping of the aneurysm. Yes, yes. After that, when I closed the windows, I accidentally closed uh, uh, the hangouts as well. That's that's what I think I happened, right? No, it's all recorded. It's all recorded. Yeah. So, uh, so the aneurysm clipping is recorded. Up to the aneurysm clipping, Marco, you have seen the clipping of the aneurysm. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Right. So, uh, instead of going into another topic, let's uh, try and uh, see another. Uh, case. So, I mean, you were seeing uh, a case where the uh, the aneurysm did not rupture. So maybe we can just see another case where the aneurysm actually, when I was doing this, the aneurysm rupture. So that is the aneurysm there. So we are dissecting again. But here I am approaching through a more subfrontal technique. I am dissecting. Can you see, guys? Can you see? No, you're not screen sharing, I. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, let me screen share. Okay. Okay. Now, are you seeing now? Uh, not quite yet. You're sharing the wrong screen. There you go. Okay, now you got the pictures and the, okay, there you go. Yes. So you yeah. see now? Yes. All of you? Right. So that's a, so right now we showed an aneurysm which had not ruptured. This is an aneurysm which had ruptured during surgery. You will see this. So that is again, you can see the optic nerve there and you can see the carotid there. This was done 2016, one year back. So uh, the aneurysm is here. So, you know, I, I have no control and I have to dissect the aneurysm. I'm doing the Proximal segment dissection here. I'm opening right above the aneurysm. You know, this is a tricky maneuver. You need to be having a very good depth perception because if you don't have a good depth perception without any proximal control, doing this thing may be crazy. Uh, I am comfortable with it because. I know if it, the aneurysm ruptures, then um, I, I can uh, probably control it. So it's, it should not be a problem, but it will be very foolhardy to do this uh, if you are beginning. So that is, the, that is the vessel there. So I have dissected. That is probably where the aneurysm is ruptured. So you can see that black mark there. Uh, so I'm taking the arachnoid further away, very gently. You must see you should not you should handle the aneurysm just like you handle, not like your girlfriend, uh, like your angry girlfriend. You know, uh, if you if you do not, I mean, girlfriend you can handle, but that's different. But you should handle just like your girlfriend has found that you have another girlfriend or something, and then you know, uh, you, you you handle her, how you talk to her, and. You know, how you go down on knees on her, that is how you should treat the aneurysm. With a lot of respect, with a lot of gentle maneuvers, uh, you make her understand that you are the only one. Slowly, okay? <laughs> so, and so we are doing this, but sometimes you push her a little bit than what you should push her and see what happens, okay? We have no proximal control, no temporary clip, nothing. And she has ruptured from a point which is different. So I am a bit confused here, but not worried. You can see in a moment, the whole field filled up with blood. So I had to put a clip on to the carotid. And you can see that happened at uh, 1439, 239 in the afternoon. And by one minute, I am, I put a, you know, any clip for five minutes is very safe anyway. So. 
Now I know that is a vessel, that is an aneurysm. So I am really, I, I'm, I'm going ahead and I have no worries. You know, it's still bleeding. You can see, still bleeding. I'm finding out where it is bleeding from. So that is a neck, that is a neck. So I'm slowly seeing where it is bleeding from. No hurries again here. Aneurysm surgery is only for very lazy surgeons like me. So uh, you have to be really laid back and relaxed. Huh? There's, you cannot hurry too much and uh, worry too much. Don't think about too much. Huh? You know that you're going to get the aneurysm eventually. It's just a three millimeter vessel bled. Huh? So you are magnifying it under the microscope like life's major problems. You magnify all these life's problems under the microscope and you think it is uncontrollable. It's not so. So you put your now at 1440 to four minutes after you the aneurysm is ruptured. Now you see my assistant, he is uh, not able to give me a good suction. So I tell him something which I cannot tell you now, but see, right. That is the tear that I have gone up to the tear. That's a tear. I've gone up to the tear to make sure that the patient doesn't lose any vessel. And now you can see the entire vessel there. You can see that is the aneurysm. That is the aneurysm. And that is the A1 turning into A2, ACOM on this side, ACOM on the contralateral side, see the ACOM on that side, that's A1 turning into A2, this was A1, A2 junction, infer inferiorly pointing aneurysm. I'm just showing my residents the entire anatomy there, and it's done, you see? So... This patient is also, uh, by the way, immediately after the surgery. You might want to know what shape the patient was in. So let's go to this part. I'm just showing the anatomy there. Can you see all of you? Yes. So that's, yes. The, that's the guy immediately after the surgery. Right, with permissions. Right, so that's another ACOM which has not ruptured. So maybe we can see, uh, let me see if I have one more. Uh, let's see an MCA aneurysm at this point. So it's a giant MC aneurysm. So this is a giant MC aneurysm. So we oh, we're trying to open the sylvian, but can you see that is aneurysm? So I understood that opening the arachnoid, see that's all the aneurysm. That's aneur that's black thing is aneurysm. So you really don't want to go in and open straight there. You don't know what is the blood flow like. So I'm going ahead and opening the cisterns first. That's the optic now. That's a carotate. Very gently take your time and then slowly opening. That's optic now, it's carotid. So sharp dissection making it more clearer, coming back to the aneurysm, opening, opening it, slowly freeing it. Again, like your angry girlfriend, you see? Huh? So you don't want her to rupture. No. This one ruptures, it'll be a bit difficult for me. <laughs> but well, but I am ready for bypass here, so I don't have a problem. So here she is being nicely delineated, and you know there is one vessel attached to her, so I have to take that vessel off. Now I am 
You must understand I am dissecting the aneurysm dome. There is a one single layer of arachnoid there, one single layer. And that is what attaches that vessel. You must always understand there is a, if the vessel is attached to the aneurysm dome, that is the arachnoid. And this arachnoid is very thin. If you make a small mistake, that aneurysm will rupture. But here I'm not very worried about aneurysm rupture because you will very soon see. See, I'm already rupturing the aneurysm. It's a clot. So I'm opening. I put a temp temporary clip there. I put a temporary clip there. And I'm opening and taking off the... I'm putting in a suction there, taking it off till I hit the black. I have to... I have to make sure that I, because that temporary clip is very, very loose. And see, now I've hit the black. See, the bleeding is there. That's a very good sign. So if there is bleeding, so now I just hold that aneurysm and see how I can reconstruct it. It's bleeding, so no need to worry about it. There's a, bleeding is a good sign. If you don't have bleeding, then you have to worry. Bleeding is not bad. So, you go ahead and you reconstruct that aneurysm neck nicely. No need for complex reconstruction, you see. That is the bifurcation. That, so I told you operating underwater, you see, you see, you have put the clip parallel to the bifurcation. That is another part of the bifurcation, where my arrow goes. You see, that is another part of the MCA bifurcation. So I need to put in a clip Parallel to that by parallel to that vessel. That's what I'll do. So the MCS, this is a 32-year-old lady. You don't want any deficits for her. You have taken out all the clot, allowed back bleeding. So that is a bifurcation. This aneurysm is a complex aneurysm. So I'm ready for bypass, but I don't need bypass. I don't need to complicate things all the time, you know. So I I go ahead and put another clip. Parallel to that person, you see? Gently, no hurry here, just because the aneurysm is bleeding. Huh? I don't need to hurry or worry here, just beautifully reconstruct that. See, the MCA bifurcation is completely re reconstructed. That is the one vessel. I mean, that is another vessel. You can see the bifurcation beautifully being reconstructed. And in between, you have this aneurysm which is, uh, you know, I put two clips, but just for surety, just to make sure she's completely okay, I put another clip to close off the gap between those two clips. Okay, done, finished. So, these are aneurysms. Now, I know that it is not, uh, uh, well, I'm stopping to screen share, John. Okay. Okay. Can you see me? I can see you, yes. Yes, so, so the point is, we really don't have uh, a lot of time to talk about each of each things in aneurysms, but one thing everybody must understand, whoever is going to be an aneurysm surgeon, first of all, this is magic. This is pure magic. This is not like interventions or something. I'm, I know aneurysms are a dying art, but uh, uh, to do an aneurysm, it's, it's magic because it's a very slow surgery. It's a, it's a slow and magical surgery. One needs to slowly go ahead, take off all the arachnoid adhesions and make correct judgments at each step. And it's easy. It, it uh, doesn't require a lot of skills or anything. It's just judgment. At each step, you make the correct judgment. One judgment wrong, and then you will pay for it. But slowly, like I have done over the years, over the last 10, 11 years, uh, we have made a lot of judgmental mistakes. We have seen all the complications. We know how to handle the complications. And when you are assured that you know how to handle complications, that gives you uh, more confidence, more love, more respect towards these aneurysms. And you go ahead, gently dissect these aneurysms, see them properly, put a clip on them. It's magical. Believe me, the patient will be walking away the next day. So uh, this is about aneurysms. About cystinosomy, I'd rather like to uh, go ahead and uh, 
uh, talk to you on another day because this is too long uh, a lecture and we will our rounds will start very soon so thank you everybody if anybody has a question Raul or Marco or Cesar or any you John anybody has a question I'll be Sure. Let, let's uh, introduce Raul first. Uh, I, uh, Raul, can you hear us? Okay. Hello, Raul. Can you hear? There you go. Could you, could you introduce yourself again to I, please? Hi, Dr. Ipe. Thank you for your presentation. Um, nice uh, to meet you. Um, well, I am a young neurosurgeon. I finished my training uh, four years ago in Cuba. I, I am, I am Venezuelan, but I live now in Colombia. I see. Okay. <laughs> a long trip. Very good okay. to see you. Do, do you have any questions, Raul, for I, or comments? Uh, no, I I think that uh, vascular surgery is difficult. Uh, you need a long uh, curve for training, but. It's amazing uh, all the anatomy that can, can you see uh, in the surgery. Hmm. You, you, uh, you know, you know, I, that's one thing I was surprised at from learning, being around neurosurgeons, uh, is how neuroanatomy is a lifelong study. I guess it comes in handy in aneurysms, right? Uh, uh, what, question, so, uh, what type of uh, approach sorry. do you use? What type of? What type of approach, approach you, use? you use? I didn't get you. Microscope? No, uh, approach. 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 Yeah, see, I, I use almost every approach. If you, uh, see, I, if it is an MC aneurysm, I, uh, I generally tailor approaches. So for example, for an ACOM aneurysm, uh, I can use a subfrontal approach. I can use a tedional approach. I can use a frontotemporal approach. Um, so for a basilar or a superior cerebellar, I generally don't do the subtemporal. I generally do uh, the half and half approach. I go for a FOZ, transcavernous, or a sylvian dissection, so half and half approach. So for a MCA, I would just focus directly, as, as you saw, I, I would focus directly a frontotemporal or a gerion should be fine. Sometimes I use a lateral supraorbital approach or uh, for uh, DACAs, I use an interhemispheric approach. So I generally tailor, I mean, I, I don't have a fixed approach for one aneurysm. I generally, I, I look at how I can approach the neck. So I generally tailor my approach just like that. Okay. 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 Oh, Raul, finally your picture came on there. We got to see you. <laughs> I got to see you again. Uh, yeah, welcome. Okay, I guess Caesar, I guess Caesar, Caesar, you, uh, uh, I'll text you to see, see if he has any questions. Marco, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't have any questions, but it's very interesting. Uh, and you have to be very patient and also work slowly and quickly at the same time, but very patient. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, we are going in October. We are going to have the international cerebrovascular course. I mean, it's the ICCVS meeting in uh, in Japan, in Nagoya. So I'll be giving a lecture. And uh, Yuha, Yuha Harnish Niemi, um, who's joining us next month here in Nepal, who will be joining my center in Nepal. Uh, he's also coming to Japan with us. So I think we can. Uh, uh, Japan has very good internet facilities, so I think we can live screen our um, surgeries. And uh, I'm also operating in uh, Kenya, in Mombasa, uh, in, uh, by November. We are uh, organizing this large operative meeting in uh, Mombasa from the World Federation of Neurosurgery. Many of us are going there and uh, we'll be doing some surgeries and usually they have some large skull based tumors or uh, aneurysms or bypass or some things so if there is any surgery i would be happy to uh, televise it and uh, also the iccvs meeting and in october i am having i'm conducting a meeting we are uh, we are having the world federation of neurosurgery president franco 
Asian CNS President Yoko Kato and uh, EANS President Jesus Lafayette and probably the EANS uh, Educational Chair Nabil, all of them are going to come to my center. 60 of them will be coming to my center. We'll be having a cadaver course and uh, we'll be talking on video lectures with discussions, quiz. Um, if there are any live surgeries, we will do it. Yuha is also with me during that time. Yuha will be uh, uh, working with us at that time. So if any of you would be interested to come, please do come down. Um, and uh, uh, most probably Luis Borba uh, will be there too. Uh, Luis Borba, we are uh, coming back from Russia together. Uh, Russia is having a last couple days course and from there we are coming back together to Nepal. So Luis also is going to be here. Yeah, I have a question. I, you know, one, a comment. I was surprised to find out that some aneurysms are operated on endoscopically. Uh, what percentage would you say can be operated endoscopically and what percentage need to be open? No, I, in my 500 aneurysms, uh, I don't think I would have the courage to open any aneurysm endoscopic. Maybe in my beginning years when I didn't okay. know about aneurysms very well, then I would uh, go ahead and uh, do these aneurysms endoscopic. But you see, if an aneurysm ruptures, if you're not able to take care of it, then you are literally endangering that patient's life. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, if it is an unruptured acom or an unruptured, uh, um, sometimes even basilar, if they can get me the clival approach and a straight clip straight to the basilar, yes, maybe. But I am not a big fan of endoscopic approach to the aneurysms because if this in in my in my uh, practice, I do not see many unruptured aneurysms. Most of these aneurysms are ruptured. So, uh, <laughs> if uh, I have to play around the aneurysm, I don't think an endoscopic approach would uh, give me the, enough space. And if I have a rupture, then it's going to be troublesome for me. So, I use very minimal invasive approaches. I can show you videos of uh, supraorbital approach to the basilar tip. Uh, I can show you this. Uh, how we drill the posterior clinoid process. Huh? I have published this also, the posterior clinoid drilling and then approach the basilar from supraorbital. This is as minimally invasive it can get, but if I put in an endoscope and then if the aneurysm ruptures, I cannot see anything. By the time I open, this patient will be dead. So I am not a big fan. Although I have seen people now doing it, they are very brave people, I must say. Uh, maybe I will come to that level, maybe after another 2,000 or 3,000 more aneurysms. But uh, I don't think at this point I, I would be confident enough to go ahead and uh, try clipping, especially ruptured aneurysms endoscopically. No. <laughs> Okay, very good. Okay, Ipe, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. We had a few neurosurgeons that couldn't get in. One was Tho Vanta as a neurosurgical resident from Vietnam. Uh, he'll, be able to, he'll, be, he'll be participating, I'm sure, in the future. And we have Cesar Oscar Guandique, who's on the panel. But apparently, Cesar, can you hear me okay? I, I don't think he can connect because he's... Uh, but I think, you know, we tested it. He's seeing the presentation. He's seeing the PowerPoint. So he did, he did benefit by that. Uh, and Raul, thank you for coming by. And this will be the first on a series of many live hangouts with uh, cases that IPA has done. So we look forward to seeing you all again. And thank you, Ipe. Yeah, John, thank you. I'll do another series on skull base aneurysms like paraclinoid aneurysms where we need to go do the dollings or the modified dollings approach. Uh, and then I can do uh, another one on skull base tumors like uh, uh, craniopharyngeomas or pitoplyables or some things like that. And I can do that as well. So, and plus one on cystinostomy where we open the cisterns in very tight brains and, uh, you know, see the basilar tip, how we visualize the basilar tip. And even in these very tight brains, without much problems, how do we visualize the basilar tip? All that I would be happy to discuss one by one. So the main aim would be to have as maximum neurosurgeons uh, on the audience so that they can ask me. It will be amazing.
Okay, very good. Okay, everybody, hang around. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you, Ipe.